the night on Marketplace. They call it a remedy for what ails you. I want to do it. A rising star in the world of alternative medicine. But is homeopathy a cure or a con? The whole theory of homeopathy is fundamentally flawed. We put products to the test. It's virtually mind-boggling. Uncover the treatments. You'd be comfortable giving a child that? And search for the truth. Are you just selling sugar pills? No, we're selling homeopathic medicines. We're heading to an extraordinary event that seems like a very bad idea. You never know. Something could happen. That's why we're at emergency. These folks are outside Vancouver General Hospital getting ready to OD, overdose, on purpose. What are you taking? Sleeping medication. Yeah. Sleeping. 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 How many of these pills are you going to take today? I'm the taking 15. The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing. Entire bottles of pills, but no one seems too worried. We got the. Here goes. Well, how do they taste? Chalky. Oh, I see. <laughs> Twenty of them right there. I can't get any more out at once. Yeah, I got a whole cap full of them. I'll just take those. To see how they're doing, we'll check in later with these members of the Center for Inquiry, a group of skeptics. What are they skeptical about? The contents of these bottles homeopathic medicines. You've probably seen them for sale, so-called remedies for cold and flu, aches and pains, you name it. Homeopathy's a multi-million dollar business in Canada. And now the Ontario government set to give this alternative system of medicine legitimacy. Bad move, according to some. We head to Hamilton to meet up with Dr. Stephen Sanger, a cancer specialist who's open to alternative medicines, but not homeopathy. Really, there's been absolutely no evidence at all from clinical trials that uh, interventions with these uh, remedies have any effect whatsoever. He's not the only critic. The Science Committee of the British House of Commons recently concluded that homeopathy is nothing more than an elaborate placebo that is theoretically weak and scientifically implausible. And how about we do a big happy face? Whoa! <laughs> but this mom in Maple Ridge, BC, swears by it for herself and her three-year-old son, Blake. What's in here? I have... Um stuff for colds and this is for I believe this is dry cough this is ear drops Denise Hodson's used homeopathy for 14 years uh, homeopathic remedies take longer than the quick fix which is you know Tylenol or something like that but in the long run there's nothing bad in there for them in fact, about 10% of Canadians have used homeopathy, including the Montreal Canadians who've just signed a deal to endorse this popular homeopathic cold and flu remedy. This is a popular yeah, cold I know and flu remedy. I take it regularly. Did it, it works? Work. Yes. Really? Yes. If I feel like I'm aching and it's nighttime and, uh, you know, <laughs> I just take one of those, I put it under my tongue and um, there I go. It's also the choice of royalty. Queen Elizabeth and other monarchs in Europe have used homeopathy for decades. You gotta wonder why, given how homeopathic remedies are made, an ingredient from a plant, animal, or mineral is diluted over and over and over again. Each time it has to be given a good shake. The theory is water retains the memory of the original ingredient. In fact, supposedly, the more dilutions, the more powerful that memory, and the stronger the remedy. To give you an idea of just how unbelievably watered down these medicines are, we head to the seashore. A popular dilution is called 30C in homeopath speak. That's one part per million, 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 million. Way less than if you were to put one drop of active ingredient in this entire ocean. A multi-million dollar business in Canada based on remedies that contain, well, nothing? 
Just look at the companies selling their homeopathic wares at this Toronto Health Expo. Homeopathy is the second most widely practiced medicine worldwide. Sure, it's popular, but what does the science say? Marketplace heads to the University of Toronto and orders up a test, the first of its kind in Canada. So this is the lab where we analyze the homeopathic remedies. We ask chemist Matthew Forbes to analyze two of the most popular over-the-counter homeopathic medicines, Belladonna and Ipica, both at the common 30C dilution factor. In each product, Forbes is looking for any trace of the active ingredient. And what's he find? It's below a level that we can accurately or precisely measure. It's roughly equivalent to five billion times less than the amount of aspirin uh, that you would take in a single uh, pellet. The active ingredient is a five billion times less than what you'd find in an aspirin. That's right. Uh, five so billion times less? That's right. So if there's no actual medicine, what is in these pills? We can say that they are primarily sucrose and lactose. Uh, the, any active ingredient that is left uh, is, is at such a small uh, concentration in comparison to the sugar, uh, it is, well, it's virtually mind-boggling. Yep, they're basically sugar pills. In fact, if you were to compare Ipica and Belladonna, how different are these two pills? Both are below the limit of detection uh, using our instrumentation, and so we would be unable to distinguish them in a blind test. That's right. There's no way he can tell them apart. Hmm, this homeopathy is starting to sound pretty suspect. But it sure seems legit. Check out this video from the largest manufacturer of homeopathic medicines in the world, Boiron, based in France. The process is precise, remedies made to exacting standards. But when we test Boiron products, common remedies are just sugar pills. So to get some answers, we head to a Vancouver conference on homeopathy and meet up with Boiron manager Carolyn Smoyer. These are being sold as two different products with two different ingredients in them, but we couldn't find anything more than sugar in them. So are you just selling sugar pills? Uh, no, we're selling homeopathic medicines. Perhaps science hasn't developed to the point where we have the equipment and the technology fine enough to be able to detect these very diluted substances. But if they are so diluted that we don't even have the equipment yet to be able to detect these substances, how can that have an effect on the body? We're talking about Nothing, nothing. He, he looked at a millionth of a millionth of a gram in these products and couldn't detect anything. Yes, homeopathy is uh, somewhat of a mystery, uh, but again, we know that it works. Time and again, believers in homeopathy talk about mystery, the unknown and unexplainable. Don't you wonder how these products might work? There hasn't been a lot of demand for clinical studies, uh, again, because of it being a traditional medicine. Back at this attempted overdose, the homeopathic medicines don't seem to be doing anything. It's been 20 minutes. Does anyone need to call a doctor? Uh, no. I'm fine. Well, You're all feeling first, fine. Yeah. Yeah. No changes here. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. It's unlikely that taking this whole bottle will hurt you. Where you're going to get injured is you take this instead of real medicine. That's exactly what happened to a baby in Australia who died after her parents treated her skin condition solely with homeopathy. Both parents were recently jailed for manslaughter. Here in Canada, what's the potential harm of homeopathy? We'll take a look at what's at stake. You're not using conventional vaccines? No. For polio? No. Measles? No. Whooping cough? And what's the Ontario government up to? When you regulate homeopaths, yep. aren't you saying that this is a legitimate medical form of treatment? 